Now, as some of you are well aware, I've been having braking problems of recent on my bike, and I'm gonna talk through of how I wanna improve it. I'll just show you a couple of products that I've got, and then I'll explain on the bike what I'm doing. Now, obviously the first obvious thing when you have braking problems, one area to look at straight away is the quality of your pad. I bought some off AliExpress, which at the time when I bought them, there was a shortage massively in the UK of brake pads, of all bike parts. There still is to some extent. However, I have managed to get the right brake pads for my bike. So I've gone for a Shimano pad. These are the resin, um, get loads of different compounds. You can get resin, sintered, and I forget the name of the other one now but resin is the one that I like. These are, seem to be a good all round, good feel, good stopping power, and they're quiet as well. So going for Shimano pad. Now, the second place to look at is your discs. Now, the first thing that you need to look at, although you need the Vernon calipers, I think they are, is the thickness of your disc to make sure they're the right thickness. I have checked mine at work, and they are 1.7 mil. You can, Normally when you buy them, they're about 1.8 and then they say to change them when they're at 1.5. However, on the back of my bike, I've got 140 mil, which for my size, I need a bigger one. 140 mil isn't big enough. It heats up too quick and you start feeling that brake fade. Brake fade is when the, the fluid gets to a certain temperature and it's just not as efficient as it was or should be. So I've gone for... Just to be careful, make sure I don't get my hands all over this. The reason that you go for the bigger disc is that it gives you bigger surface area so the brakes can actually cool down a lot quicker and a lot easier, therefore keeping the brake fluid cooler so you don't get as much brake fade. And the reason that I mentioned wearing gloves is so you don't contaminate your discs and your pads with the grease from your hands, which will affect the actual quality of the brakes. You do need to wear gloves, and I will do when I start working on it. As I've gone for a 160mm disc, I've gone for one of the Shimano ones. There's all different qualities that you can get. You can get some with fins on it. I tried getting them. You can't get them for love no money, so I just went for the standard 160mm. These are the Shimano 105 GRX and SLX, so you can use them on gravel bikes, road bikes, and you can also use them on... Mountain bikes, although 160mm on a mountain bike, wouldn't recommend it. Minimum 180. I actually run 200s on mine. But on the road bike, 160. Another thing that you need to check is the recommended size of rotor that your bike manufacturer says that you can use. Now, I'm not too sure what it is on the Ribble that I've got. Uh, I did try getting the information from them, couldn't find it, but I did find something online which says that you're alright running a 160, so I'm going to use a 160 on the front, 160 on the rear. Now when increasing the size of the disc, you need to make sure that you've got the correct spacers. You need the right frame mount adapter, now this can be a bit of a minefield depending on your bike and what sort of setup you've got. I would recommend going to your local bike shop, they'll tell you what size you need to look for. Now I'm hoping this one that I've got's right. I haven't been to a bike store, but I've gone for this. It's a 160mm adapter. So it's basically on my bike, when you're on 140, you literally just bolt it straight to the frame. But because I'm going up to a 160, you need to lift the caliper away from the frame to the correct height. So I've gone for this. So let's go outside. I'm gonna fit these to the bike. I'll show you as I'm doing it. So, <laughs> What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the new disc on the front and I'm going to put the old disc on the back just purely because mostly stopping power is done on the front rather than the back. Now, depending on what kind of disc you've got or wheel setup you've got, it'll depend on whether you need a lock ring tool, which for those of you that have got one is just basically a cassette tool, or you might have the six bolts. Uh, they're not bolts, they're rivets, but on your wheel you might have six bolts. If you do do that, then you need to torque them up to the right torque, just so it doesn't move. Or putting too much pressure on the bolt and flexing the disc. Yeah, well, so when doing this, what you want to do is, is just put a smear of copper grease on there. The reason why we use copper grease is that it's heat resistant, so it's not going to melt and run down your disc. And uh, make your braking power horrendous. So let's get that done now. That's the copper grease on there. Don't know if it's showing up on the camera. 
We've just got a smear going around there. And the reason we do that is so it makes it easier to get the disc off when, uh, when it comes time to remove them. So as you can see, that just goes on there like that. Now we just need the locking ring. So this is your locking ring and as you can see on there it's got 40 newton meters. Now if you haven't got a torque wrench with this type of uh, locking ring I have in the past just put a load of pressure on it however if you're into your bikes and you want to do it right then invest in the right tools for the job. So I got this off Amazon, I've had this ages, I think it was about 30 quid. Uh, I've only used it a few times but I know it's right, it just gives me peace of mind when I'm flying down with the sense that everything's talked up right. Now one top tip and you need to pay attention to this one, when you put your lock ring back on do it up by hand before you start talking it down. Last thing you want to do is cross thread it because if you cross thread it it could potentially be the end of your hub. So yeah, do it up by hand and then talk it. Um, so yeah. We're going to put this one up to 40 newton meters and uh yeah that's that wheel done as you can see that wheel's done and that's going go, not going anywhere yeah we're going to do the pads but i'm just going to change this back one first and show you the what we need to do on the back so as i said earlier this is the rear caliper and as you can see for the 140 mil you literally just bolt it direct onto the frame and because we're putting a bigger disc on then this needs to be raised up to the correct height so to do that, what we need is the correct spacer. Now I'm hoping that this is right. So as you can see, that's going to go there and it's going to lift the caliper up for the right amount. So let's get that done and uh, I'll come back to you. So as you can see there, I fitted the, <coughs> the spacer. I'll leave a link to the video that helped me with that because that was a bit of a, I didn't think it was going to fit. But basically it's put two, you get two spacers in the pack out of, on my frame have gone on underneath. Then they go up and then you get two bolts in there which actually bolt to the caliper so the caliper's bolted to the spacer and then the spacer's bolted to the frame if that makes sense which as you can see has uh has lifted it up the correct amount so let's get the wheel in i'm not tightened it up because obviously we've got to centralize the uh the brake caliper actually what i'm going to do is first is i'm going to change the brake pads I'm going to get the Shimano ones in, which is dead easy on this. Bolt there, click there, pull it out, pads go in. You may need to push the pistons back, depending on how far they've moved out. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get that done now. So that's the wheel back together. <coughs> the brake back with the brake on. It's going to be hard for me to show you, but that's absolutely perfect. That is lined up, bang on where I need it to, the pad with the disc. So now what we need to do because we've fitted new pads let's get rid of that noise so it's going to be hard for me to film this and show you but basically what I do is is I spin the wheel and then I use the brake to, um, to stop it and then centralise it where it needs to be but I just nip it up each time then spin, nip it up, spin, nip it up, spin, nip it up and just till it's it's in the right position. So I'm going to do that now off camera and I will uh, come back. So now if we spin it, there's no rub in there at all. You probably can't hear it over the hub but there's not. Just have to take my word on that. So I'm going to do the front and uh, I'll do that off camera. So let's go. So <coughs> that's new disc fitted on the front 160. We've got a 160 on the rear, we've got new pads, so my brake efficiency now should be a hell of a lot better. I have noticed that the rear pad brake does need a bleed doing on it, which I'm not going to do that on camera. Um, although if you do want to see me do a brake bleed, let me know down below in the comments and I'll show you how I do it. But yeah, now I just need to go and bed in the pads. So yeah, to bed in the pads what you want to do is find an hill and go down there and don't give it full beans and start slamming your brakes on. All you'd want to do at first is you're just trying to get some of that brake pad material onto the disc so they make a good bond. That's what I got told anyhow when I was at college doing uh, car mechanicing. So same principle applies to, uh, to the bike I guess. Anyway, I'm not going to film this. I'll let you know how they get on the brakes because uh, I was out a couple of weeks ago and I'm in the middle of editing that video and my brakes were overheating. So uh, 
yeah, I'm just at the top of this hill. And uh, until then, I'll see you next time. Maybe consider popping us a subscribe. Anyway, I'm gone. Time to roll down this hill. Bye.